Without a doubt, 2020 has got to be the most interesting year to go down in mankind history. But back when I was just a kid, I pictured a different future growing up. I think in the early 2000s, we had bigger visions for the future, like flying cars and international space travel. Or better yet, time travel. What a world that would be, don't you think? Given the circumstances and events going on across the world right now, that's exactly what we could use right now. A time machine. 2020 has seen all sorts of turmoil since the beginning of the new year. From World War III tension between the United States and Iran, to a worldwide national pandemic outbreak. On top of that, racism is at an all-time high, sparking protests and riots all across the world. Due to police killing local Minneapolis resident George Floyd, his bystanders captured it all on film. Is this the revolution? Should we be concerned for our future? Only time will tell. Originally, I had an idea to do a documentary on how the novel coronavirus swept the nation and how that was affecting our local businesses and economy right here in Saskatoon. My partner would take in a global and a Samuel Connected Youth Leadership Fund and they helped me bring my vision to life. Everybody put a fist up in the air. Perfect. Now we're gonna do this. Protests and police brutality. Now we're gonna sit like this, have focus on it. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Albert Arbery, everybody. I can't breathe. That was one of the last things said by George Floyd as Minneapolis officer Derek Chavan held his knee over George Floyd's neck for almost nine minutes while he was handcuffed face down on the ground. Immediately after ambulance arrived, George Floyd was found unresponsive and transported to the hospital where he was then later pronounced dead by authorities. Hello, welcome to the documentary. We are walking to the city hall. Uh, we have a rally today in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. I don't know more. Uh, there's a lot of craziness going on in the world today. Look at all these people out here. What's his name? George Floyd! 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 One more time! George Floyd! Let's go, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. It's not enough. Whatever you're doing is not enough. And I think the people now more than ever have a unity with each other and they're not susceptible anymore to these games and tricks and these racial tactics and suppression and control. It's, the people are getting sick and tired and we can feel it, everyone can feel it. It's across the entire world right now. Whether or not it's orchestrated or not, the people are together in something and that's what's important. Los Angeles, Ottawa, BC, young people are the engine of change. It is not about someone who passes away, it is about police brutality. Racism has no borders, it kills everybody. Racism kills everybody, it is costly. Canada is no stranger to its own racial issues, but many Canadians care to admit that the system is just as corrupt here 
as it is in our United States neighbors to the south. As a First Nations man in Canada, I've personally experienced this racism firsthand growing up in Saskatoon. Last month in April, Winnipeg police killed three indigenous residents over the span of 10 days, but this is probably the first time you're hearing about it. That's why this fight is so important to many of us of all races. Because we share the same struggles, the same injustices, the same paradigms and outlooks on how we perceive reality. After showing our support at the protests, we decided to ask a few friends about the racial issues right here in Canada. There was no coincidence that all across the world we united together as one to fight the oppressions against us. Good evening, a Tofino woman has been shot dead and the person who pulled the trigger is a police officer. The shocking news broke this morning in New Brunswick. The First Nations woman and mother from Vancouver Island was killed after someone asked the police to go check if she was alright. An officer who is now under investigation says she threatened him with a knife. Tried to back up but he was stuck and he had to, to use his uh, firearm to defend himself. Why couldn't they have used a taser? He has got his fucking head straight. Get out of the fucking gutter, man. He has it. taking us down. You ain't, you ain't thinking about the consequences that you're doing to us. You're fucking hurting us. I think, I think for a long time, racism in society, in America, Canada, even, has just been overlooked, never mind just completely disregarded in all aspects. And it's, it's unfortunate that it takes a man being murdered and have it recorded for the whole entire world to see for us to even have an idea of making a change. That's bad in itself because this change should have happened a long time ago and these kind of things should have stopped a long time ago and police and racial bias, violence is, is real and it's still happening more and more than we think. I have never seen racial tension so high since the killing of Colton Bushi back in August 9, 2016. Bushi was a resident of Cree Red Pheasant First Nation. After getting a flat tire, he and four friends had driven onto a farmhouse owned by Gerald Stanley. They had been drinking early and tried to break into another truck at another farm. One of the group tried to start an ATV while the SUV they were in crashed into one of Stanley's cars. Stanley reacted by grabbing one of his handguns and shooting Colton Bushi in the neck as Colton Bushi was sleeping in the vehicle. It wasn't until Gerald Stanley was acquitted of all charges by an all-by jury that we seen an uproar in the community. Every day's a struggle, Every, day's a struggle. Every night is pain, Every night is wake pain. up the next day, repeat. And do it again Same shit My people are dying People are dying Government don't care All they want is votes and shit Like my chief and counsel out here Well shit I don't care what I say I don't care what I Cause say. it's freedom of speech Where's kids gotta act right Tryna act like they was raising the streets Well shit Indigenous women Indigenous Going women. missing and murdered missing and Nobody's murder. talking about it Nobody's fucking searching Well shit Cause racism is still alive But children gotta see that world No justice for Cody and Bougie Or that little Tina girl It's crazy world That we live in coast society Cause racism comes in no varieties that's fucked up. My people are suffering, poverty is struggling, crazy, but that's how we live Everywhere you look, you see someone trying to hustle something, trying to make something out of nothing. Drugs and alcohol are taking over everybody, and this gang shit just ain't helping. Think about it, take a minute, listen to the words I say. That shit is crazy. The world is just going to shit right now, and we all just gotta stand together. We gotta stand with them. I mean, cause we're in the same boat, same exact same boat as they are. I mean, fucking they went through the same shit as us. We go through the same shit as them. So we just gotta stand up together. Well, I mean, my whole my whole life I've dealt with racial bias and like uh, like profiling and like stereotypes. So for me, that's nothing new, but I think that it's important that that subject is being brought to the public eye more now than ever. Just stand up, stand up, fight together. You know, like, let's just fight this racism shit. Like, instead of trying to start a race war, let's just finish this shit, you know, fight together. Even with the whites, we gotta stand up with them. They're standing with us, with the blacks as natives too. I think it goes to say with any big organization that there's going to be some sort of corruptness when it comes to money or some sort of power or leverage. There's always going to be some 
aspect of corruptness and I think it's been going on for way too long and it's it needs to stop and it needs to be addressed more more instead of just being set aside or people signing these hush agreements so that the police don't have to face the consequences in the public eye. I am 16 years old and we need to do something about the injustices that are being caused today. We need change. I am tired of seeing people die. I am tired of seeing people being killed like they're nothing more than animals. We need to do something as a society. The protests continue to march, but the media coverage has died down since the riots stopped in the United States. We continue to fight alongside the Black Lives Matter movement and speak out about the growing racial issues right here in Canada. For now we have a voice. A voice that can be felt and heard across the world. We have never been more powerful in numbers and supporters than we are right now. But the question still remains. Will we ever finally get to see a change? Yo, if you guys can hear me on this video, this song right here is going out to every single First Nation woman across Canada and the U.S. Stand strong, you guys are very beautiful human beings. You guys just have to rock and power. Hey, racism is alive and well. It's 2020, and you figured this thing would be done years ago, right? But it's 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 gonna be around. It's gonna be around for our kids, kids, kids. You know, like that's. I hate to say it though, but that's gonna be the thing. Like, Garrett Baldhead is a well-known DJ by the alias of DJ XL. Before the coronavirus, he had tours and shows lined up across Western Canada. He is also no stranger to the racial bias and stereotypes Native American males face on a daily basis. We met up to talk about politics and what inspires him to pursue music and art. Like being, being First Nations, being from the reserve, I'm very proud of who I come from, where I come from. My last name is Baldhead. I come from my own First Nation, and that's probably one of the coolest things ever, I think. I actually just watched the video five days ago, like, like legit just watched it. And, like, just the way he was crying for his mom to find out that his mom was passed away two years before that. And then him crying for his mom, just kind of like, whoa, you know, like, man, we do have a problem. There is a problem there with racism and police brutality, you know, like, I went to film school with this one guy that sat beside me and he said that they would take people for ride-alongs and they would tell people to wear leather gloves and they'd have phone books in the back of their car to hit people. So he's like, well, why do we have to wear leather gloves so you won't leave no bruises on your hands or the person? And you hit him with a phone book, beat the shit out of them, and then drop them off on the sidewalk and take off. So uh, one of our leaders here in the indigenous community who's made waves right across Canada had marches along with Leonardo DiCaprio and everybody in New York City, all over the place. And he's one of the biggest changes here in our community, but not only here, probably in Western Canada. His name is Chief Alan Allen. Thank you. I fell at the hands of the police brutality. I took the burden and the battered and the bruises for all the minorities who couldn't speak out, out there anymore. Talk to them. All of them that couldn't speak up until they had their day in court until then they were probably even found guilty of a crime that they did not commit. Where can I get help and how can how can I do it? You know, like it, a lot of it is People don't, they fall through the cracks because they don't know the system. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's, yeah. it's hard. Like I see that all the time too. People don't even, some people don't even realize that they have rights, you know? And it's hard to watch because they'll, they'll throw themselves up there and they'll just throw themselves at the mercy of the court, plead out, even if they didn't do it. It's like a trap, you know? And then a lot of these people are recovering or else they're dealing, they're neck deep in their issues. And it's, it's like, we're, how can we help them instead of putting them in jail? It's basically where, it, what it comes down to in the, like we, we were never really supposed to be a part of this system. We have our own ways of dealing with our offenders, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's not locking them up and throwing away the key. It's real healing. How can we heal as a collective is what it comes down to. We want change! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's going to happen now. Change ain't going to happen yesterday. No! Everything that happened to us happened yesterday. Today is the 21st century where we bring change for all of Canada, for the minority people of all life. It has to stop. What goes on in the Palestine? What goes on here in Canada? What goes on? what it is that you don't want to see anymore and this is what I don't want to see anymore happen to our people this is what I don't want to see no more help them up we're not animals you don't have to press us to the ground Everybody I hang with up here in Canada is, is native cats. You know what I'm saying? I've hang, and since I, my brother, since I've, since I've been knowing my brother, I've told him, I was like, dude, you know, being here, the native people remind me of black people. God, it's like, it's the exact same. It's your struggles or what we struggle through. You know, it's, 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 it's weird for me to see both sides of the coin like that. You know what I'm saying? And I've, I've experienced the racism, which is it's crazy. Every black man has uh, have experienced that up here. Because it's it's nuts. It's Talia's Southern Grill is a southern take on modern soul food. Chef Stax is a well-known name in the area, building his dreams and putting the machines in motion for the last decade. It wasn't until February 2020 his hard work began to pay off when him and his wife decided to go all in and open their first Southern staple ranch here in the North. Originally from Kentucky and growing up on his mother's home cooked recipes, he decided to bring home to us. He wanted to bring back that childhood nostalgia feeling and share his experiences. And there's no better outlet than his very own take on soul food. Like, I know I've seen how they treat native people here, man. I've seen them. Back when, I remember when I first got here, one guy, you know, I, I, I hate using the word I don't use that. To me, it's like using the word, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, but they call, they, what was the cops name? They cat? I seen, I was in the cop, I've seen how he treated native cats. Dude, and I'm like, Wow, that's nuts, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and that's me coming from a state seeing this. I'm like, dude, that's wild. Yeah. And you know, you know, you know, and, and it's like, I think up here, if everyone was to have a strong march, start to get together, how they've done the states and start the movement here. Yeah. You've got to do that, man. We've got to do that, do that way, because they think this is just gonna go away. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. this needs to stop. The way the cops treat people, the way you know, it's 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 it's, it's crazy. There's a certain stigma about our, our men, like we're just all criminals, all lazy, all good for nothing, all, you know, pieces of junk that just sit around all day and do nothing. Yeah. Well, you got to remember that we're recovering from fucking attempted genocide, like almost, well it was, right? Like yeah. realistically, yeah. cultural genocide, genocide in general, and we, we carry that trauma, man. Like all of us do. And then you, you throw in those residential schools and that's like... 150 years too of, of that injustice and it's about 150 years anyway like that's a lot of fucking rape that's a lot of repressed stuff that even our, the, our family members didn't get to deal with right so that we carry that trauma too so it's it's tough and then i started to ask questions about mental health issues one thing most common about growing up in the inner city neighborhoods was we all had broken homes but why why was it socially accepted not to know your father or to have a relative incarcerated for a life term? I started to think we're all programmed to have limiting beliefs and that society has done a good enough job at helping us destroy ourselves. I'm not visibly First Nation, I, at least I think. And I've had it, I've honestly had it lucky too. And I would say even in general myself would have white privilege in certain areas even as a First Nation, because people never questioned me in, in a lot of places. But people who didn't know, now you know, I am a First Nations person and I'm proud of it. And I am proud of those who are white and you should be proud of that too. And I think everyone should be proud of who they are, but you don't need to be bashing each other because of what you believe in. That's just, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And as, as this issue has been growing and growing, that's, that was wrong what that cop did to that guy. 
it was so wrong. It was disgusting and it pissed me off. And But there's a revolution and there's change happening because of it. And with every bad, there's always a good. And, and it's unfortunate and RIP George Floyd, honestly, because that was hard to watch and see. And it's hard to see the whole world go to shambles. And you're up here and everything seems so normal. And, and everyone around here who doesn't see the outside world, all they see is the normal. So they see all this shit on the internet and now they're all like, oh, wow, <laughs> everything's normal here. It doesn't affect me. Everything's normal here. I didn't want to only focus on the racism in Canada, but also wanted to shed light on the mental health issues and what we are doing to overcome our own struggles and depressions. If the economy crashing wasn't enough, or dealing with a corrupt system, then it's learning we have our own inner demons to face and our own battles to win from within. I wanted to ask everybody what their plans were for the next year if the pandemic continues to keep everyone inside. And I also wanted to know what they're doing for their mental health and to stay happy and active. With half the year gone in the country trying to get back to where we were before the coronavirus hit, we can only hope for the best. If anything this whole experience has taught us, it is that we are not alone. We need to stick beside one another and to be there for each other during these times of crisis. I mean, I'm gonna stay focused and prioritize my life on my family and taking care of my kid. Um, a lot of the outside world is, it, I do acknowledge it, but at the same time, I just wanna raise my family and live my life, but it's kind of hard right now with everything happening. So yeah, you're right. I would say I definitely learned a lot more it, within myself and as, it's, as, as it's, the phases are opening, I feel like there's more mindfulness, you know. I know places are starting to open now, but before they were, I spent more time outside and experiencing the beautiful water that's flowing here and, and understanding more of who I am through, through the nature, I'd say. I am concerned for, for most people, like my family and shit like that, but for myself, I think I'm, I'm doing pretty good, staying at work, uh, getting my own hustle and selling merch and shit. But I'm more concerned for our people because they're gonna, they're gonna hit the fucking the rock bottom of shit and they're gonna pay for it the way from getting all that shit. Okay, well, right now we're open at half capacity and we're doing pretty good at that. Um, so we'll just keep doing that, keep doing our deliveries um, and just take it one day at a time. Yeah. And that's all, that's all we can do, you know, and the only focus of what we want to do or what we want to accomplish. If we start panicking and we start getting nervous about things, then that's when we'll fail. Yeah. So we just keep, like I said, keep doing what we're doing now. We do have a lot of people that want me to come play their parties at private parties, but you know, like I ain't saying, I ain't saying no to money, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. I ain't saying no to money, that's for sure. Like I'll come, I'll do it. We don't take pictures or anything. We just, you know, go on with your night. I'm there to play music, entertain, and, but for 2021, wow. And I was watching the news the other day and they're allowing in-house DJs, but no requests, but no dance floors. So I don't know how that's gonna work. Still music, they still so need music there, right? Still, yeah, like like before this COVID started, I was a regular DJ at Toontown Tavern. They were like treating me so well. Like they upped my pay and I never asked them to. And they, you know, like they're just like, whoa, that's what you pay me now? They're like, yeah, you're worth it. And I was like, dope, thank you very much, you know? And I was like, hey, I ain't gonna complain. I'll probably just keep doing what I'm doing. I write a lot of music. Like I said, I'm writing, right now I'm writing a mixtape. Well, not writing, writing and recording a mixtape. It's just called Bedroom Music. And then I'm making an EP called The Vision. Yep. That'll probably be out in the fall uh, through Reservoir Records. I don't know who the distribution company is or whatever. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Um. Without a doubt, this whole experience has taught me a lot about myself as well as the community and people I interviewed. Looking back now, I realize I had my own inner demons to overcome and battle with. In a sense, I had to fail and fall just in order to receive the burning desire needed to win. Sometimes that's what life gives you, a blessing in disguise, but most don't notice it. 
So where do we go from here? And how do we recognize failure as a lesson to learn from? And I think that's what keeps me going is to know that I know there's stuff I wrote five years ago that compared to a lot of the stuff that's happening in my life right now. And so the next five years, I, I, I can't wait to see what the heck's gonna happen. And through all this change and all the, all the stuff going on in the world and having a voice maybe that could reach extreme numbers and numbers of people that need it. Um, I think it's need is a key word. Like people who need to hear me rap are the ones I'm aiming for, you know? It's not who wants to hear me rap, it's those who need it, right? Yeah. And I think that's what keeps, keeps me going because I need it just as bad as they do. Patience. I've had to learn to be patient with myself too because you know, like nothing's built in a day, man. That includes us. Like I, I finally get that analogy where we're, our body is a temple, right? And we're, we're constantly working on it, constantly trying to improve, constantly learning, constantly building ourselves up. And we're never gonna be done, but that's the goal. It's the pursuit of happiness, right? It's the pursuit of completeness. It's, it's like build habits that just sustain you, man. Like, cause at, like after a while, when you make something your, your everyday, it becomes your norm and that becomes your comfort level, right? Like right now, I live in a sober home, you know, with my family and we're, we're good, like straight up. Like there's no drugs, there's no alcohol there. Like it's not even allowed there, you know? Like we don't, we, we smudge every day and like there's, like for us now, like the norm is like getting a new, like a new, new like certain smudge, like California smudge or <laughs> like <laughs> buffalo or horse sage or whatever, like that's like that excitement of like, oh my God, I can't wait to smudge with this, you know? Like that has become a norm for us. Whereas before it was like, oh, is there any beer? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's how, it's where you put yourself, you know? And if, if you really do want to seek out that, there's always places like you can. And if God willing, the creator usually helps out with that too. You know, like I believe that. Like, things come to you when you need them the most now. Yeah, yeah, Stay strong, stay focused, keep your circle tight. Um, keep what's important close to your heart. Take care of you and yours. You know, don't let the devil into your heart, man. Take care of your kids. It's because if not, you know, nobody's gonna take care of your family but you. Your family will take care your family will take care of you and you'll take care of your family. It's, that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. Bottom line. Um, and just, you know, because there's so many temptations out here that uh, that'll destroy families. They have destroyed families. So that's what we need to do, man. Stay focused. And let's not let's not put race between everybody out here. You know, so we're all one people, you know? It's we shouldn't be going through this, you're this color, you're that color, you're this, you're from there, you're man, whatever, man, you know what I'm saying? Let's just, you know, let's just get it all and do this live. It's gonna feel like it's impossible and you're gonna feel like no one wants to work with you, but don't even take it the wrong way, bro. It's just just keep doing your thing, man. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. You don't even gotta worry about being with these people or being with these guys. Just do your thing, bro. Do what makes you happy. You're not in it for these guys to make these guys happy. You're in it to make yourself happy. Straight up, for real. If you're gonna keep going, keep going, man. Don't give up. Don't stop. Don't even listen. No, okay. Speak that shit into existence. If you want it, go get it. Tell yourself every day that that's what you want. There's power in words and just believing in yourself. And sometimes, who gives a fuck about what everyone else thinks? Who cares what? your mom or your dad or what your family's gonna think or what your friends think or you suck right now who cares work at it work hard if you work really hard at something you want you can achieve it if you believe in it i think um basically you know just don't give up i was always taught practice makes perfect and practice made very perfect for me and that's what I say to you guys. Practice. Keep practicing. Just don't give up. If you got a dream, just keep following. Don't let naysayers or haters hate on you just because they want to be in your position. You know, like fucking, they want what you have. So just, just keep striving for it, no matter what anybody says. Like, Because in the end of the day, it should make you proud for the craft that you do, like it does for me. So just keep doing that. So I'm, that's basically it. Like, even me, I'm not perfect, right? Like, I do have those days where I just don't feel like myself. Like, I just want to go out and do do dumb stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, it's... 
in that moment, it's very hard to say no, especially if it's all around you. You gotta stay away from the environment, man. You, yeah. know, you can't even put yourself there. If you feel vulnerable and like to a point, like, even a little bit, don't put yourself there to where you're questioning, is it worth it? Should I have a drink? Should I just go home? Like, if you have to ask yourself those questions, you shouldn't have even showed up, you know? Like, because at the end of the day, like, like I said, nobody's coming to save you. Like, you have to save yourself. Nobody's gonna come say, no, he's not gonna drink. Yeah. Or like, no, he's not having any of this or that, right? Like, at the end of the day, it has to be within. I mean, you have to help yourself, man, like, straight up. And a lot of that is dealing with that trauma again. Like, it comes back to that, yeah. basically. Try not to get mad. Um, it's no matter how much anger you feel, I don't think getting... Because I got mad the other day having this conversation, and I went home, I took it home with me, and I realized being mad didn't do anything. So I think being able to listen even to the other side and whoever made you. <sighs> to those who are oppressed, I think you need, I really believe to stay calm. And if you can't get your point across, just leave it. Just leave it because karma's a real bitch. <laughs> And it comes, it, it'll come, They'll, they might not understand from you, but maybe down the line someone else will make them understand. So there's no reason for anyone to be pissed off. I think just staying calm and being true to who you are. I know it's hard and, and really don't forget your roots as indigenous or as black or if you are oppressed and, and even if you're being bullied or this, it goes for anyone white black whatever like if there's something that's pissing you off in a conversation like this i think you just need to both listen and understand and leave the violence man just let go of the violence like it's violence ain't gonna make anyone understand you can't force it and i think there's more understanding if we listen yeah. so, like